Right, so um, I had a question about how to make a somewhat organic mass in Revit so that you could apply a wall to it. So I'm going to do that one really quickly. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is throw down some references. So I'm just picking reference planes. Um, and you'll notice that I have multiple levels in this project. Um, wherever I'm going to have a spline that's going to define one of my points in my wall, which we'll see in a minute, um, I have a, a level made for it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is these reference planes, and I'm just going to draw one that's going to be uh, the length of the wall, and then at the ends here I'm going to have two uh, that are identified as the ends, because we want the ends um, of each spline to start in the same place and kind of follow along the same axis here and then end at the same place so that the when we're looking at our wall from the front the ends are straight and the top and bottom of the wall is a square you know so uh, we're in level one we've got our reference lines and I'm going to go into model and I'm going to pick the spline tool and start right at the intersection of these two points draw a spline and hit enter when we're done up to level two, I'm going to hit spline again. And now the important thing here is that I want to make sure that down here in my bottom left area, uh, when I'm looking at these, as I tab through, that I'm getting end point, let's see here, end point of reference plane. So I want that end point, and then I can create my splines any way I want. And again here, I want to make sure that I'm getting end point of reference plane, uh, because what I don't want to do is have it be any of those other uh, any of those other options because when I look at these they won't be uh, equally spaced. These points will be attached to these points. It's generally a mess, so I want them to just stick to the endpoints of the reference plane so that they stay parallel to each other. Back to level three spline again. I'm going to make sure I tab through from my endpoint of my reference plane. Do another spline here. Tab, Enter. So now I have three splines, select them all, and I'm going to hit Create Form. So there's my form. Um, somewhat organic guy there. And make sure that your shading is turned on here uh, so you can see it. And then if I want to change any of these, I can select, uh, I can select them, or I can select the mass itself, and I can hit uh, Edit Profile, you can add a profile here, but what I can also do is I click on one of these and say uh, Edit Profile here. It would give me every single one of those spline points. If I tab select them, I can pull them forward or backward, make it a little bit less dramatic if I want to. And uh, you should be able to do that for all of your profiles. So here's my other one, Edit Profile, here are my points again. And so I could really exaggerate one if I wanted to, for instance. Hit OK. So there's my form. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hit Finish Mass and um, go into the Architecture tab. And the first thing I'm going to do is hit Wall uh, by Face. I actually made a wall called Glass up here. What it is is I did an Edit Type Duplicate. Edited it here, change the material to glass, change the thickness to something reasonable. OK, OK. And as I said, when I hit wall by face, it's going to allow me to select the face that I want. And then hit finish. Now it looks like there's something wrong with my wall. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, there's a sweep on it or something for some reason. Delete. Okay. There we go. So there's my glass wall. That's uh, hard to see because it's glass, but I'm going to hide my mass here. You can see that's my glass wall. Um, so that's one way to do that. I select my mass again. I'm just going to copy it right next to itself here. Here's my other mass. The other thing I can do is um, do a curtain system, which is right here. I'm going to select 
my face and hit create system and what it's going to do is create in this case a 5 by 10 current system so we're going to edit type duplicate this call it whatever we want to there we go and i can change this to a fixed number for instance on both of these let it do the math hit okay and change these to uh, 10 Apply. Change this to that type. There they are. So, oh, that was a four and four. I'm gonna put another one in here. Ten. Ten. Apply. And so, what it's gonna do is it's gonna update this um, to match. And now, this is gonna have mullions and stuff in it. Um, you can see that this doesn't have mullions. It currently because these don't have uh, any specified in their type here but I could add mullions in here. Uh, now this doesn't trim particularly beautifully um, but it kind of can get the point across. Uh, I personally would go for um, I mean so there are kind of two things that are happening here and one is that um, you know, most of the time when you have a wall like this in a typical application, your your panels aren't actually curved. So what you're seeing here are a bunch of fasted panels, which is a little bit more realistic. Now, how those panels fit together with a mullion um, is a different story because let's just do it really quickly here. Let me add a couple mullions. Um, just do these little square guys. So this is kind of problematic because, as you'll see, uh, when you put these mullions together, it it's really still a, a kind of a messy join. So here's your mullions. They have no idea what's going on. They're trying to do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, <clears throat> border ones are still trying to stay straight. So you see there's like a lot of weirdness going on. But uh, in reality, you know, if you made this wall, you would have kind of... If you're trying to make it out of standard components, I mean, the reason that you you would panelize glass like this is because it's more affordable and because, you know, you have to find a way to make a flat glass application. It's very difficult to get actual organic shaped glass like this. So, um, say impossible. Uh, so, you know, what you want to do is facet these uh, facades. Now, these don't trim properly, obviously. So there, this is kind of problematic in that way. Um, so what can you do for that? Well, there are kind of more complex ways of going about this that include um, the use of adaptive components, and I can put some tutorials uh, in the comments for this video. Um, you can see this is kind of awkward um, just in the way it's done here. But, you know, I mean, depending on kind of what's important, and uh, what the point is, you know, uh, there are times when this can actually be somewhat effective because if you, um, you know, if you pull your section back so that you're actually just seeing one segment of this glass, it's going to look a lot less crazy in section. I mean, the obviously the mullions are still off. These are the wrong mullions uh, to use in this application, but um, looks a lot less crazy and it looks a little bit more reasonable um, and even without mullions it's going to look you know it's going to look okay in section and so the question is you know what's what are you trying to show here and I think um, it's probably one thing in your construction documents and a completely different thing in like a rendering situation and so I mean that's going to get your point across in a construction document you know what I mean um, at least for my class whereas you know you probably want to render with something like this that either you photoshop mullions and i mean and you'd really have to think about kind of how how this is done because you wouldn't have custom mullions that are curved to this angle for every single angle of this right um so so how are you going to from a design standpoint, how are you going to kind of rectify the situation that you have here, which is that uh, your curtain wall is very, very organically curved and you want to panelize it, uh, but at the same time, you know, you can't realistically make all of these uh, individual 
Mulligan's work. So um, it's kind of interesting thing to think about. Of course, as I said, I will put a couple of tutorials about how to handle all this uh, in the comments and uh, you can really go down a rabbit hole in terms of how you customize and change these. Um, it can be really interesting. Uh, so I hope that's helpful.